Hey there guys, Tony here. Um, just looking at some of the um, insulators that we have in our area. Um, I'm going to start off with probably like the disc insulators, suspension discs over this side. Um, we got a mixture of ceramic and glass. Um, the glass ones, you can see they're doubled up and that's because mostly around in the 50s, and the, um, which is mainly when they started to come out here, um, they always doubled them up just in case if one breaks and they've got a backup. Um, we've got two different sizes, we've got the 6 inch disc and we've got the um, 10 inch disc. Both of these are made by Armalite. Um, you can tell that they're the 50s type because um, of the shape of this back piece on them. Um, and it's got the rib around it, it's got a bit of a rib there. So it's a um, more earlier version, they're quite a distinctive looking disc anyway. Um, looking at the ceramic ones, we've got the Ohio brass ones. You can see I've actually removed the um, the metal piece out of the front because it's um, it had rusted off. So I'm going to put a new one in there. Um, you see, this one has also done it. So this one here is a um, Buller's disc. It is made is made in England in 1953. You can see by the date there. Um, the main brands we have of them is. Um, Back in the um, 40s, 50s was um, NGK, oh not NGK, was um, Ohio Brass, um, Buller's, um, Armalite, which is now known as Pilkington Glass, um, and also we had Taylor Tuncliffe, which is also um, an English brand. Um, so that, that's mainly what we had as disc insulators. Um, I'm going to go to pin type. Um, most common pin type in the 50s was um, the Buller's um, pin type um, which actually comes in two different sizes this, this one here was generally used on two phase or three phase lines um, so you can see this one's made in 1956 now these also came in two different sizes um, this being the small one you can see the one on that fuse base is actually the bigger one the reason why that one's a bigger one is because they actually came off a swirl line that fuse um, fuse base, so they use um, the big insulators on swirl line. Um, so that's um, just the standard pin types, um, fuller's version. And we'll go to our mushroom ones. So this here is a Canadian porcelain mushroom insulator. Uh, also, it's made in 1953. So CP9 1953. Um, takes this, um, I think it's 25mm um, lead head spindle. And um, this one, this um, Ohio brass insulator here, the disc, that came off a um, swirl line which was um, out Horaki Road. Um, this mushroom here came off the same swirl line. Um, it's, um, it's also an Ohio brass insulator as well. Um, not really too sure how common these are. I've not really seen any more of these. Um, it's sort of slightly smaller, a bit smaller than the um, Canadian porcelain. It'd be about five inches across. And you got the um, more common, which is more of a more commonly used in the low voltage lines, but it's not unusual to see these as um, used in um, 11 kV lines as well. So that's a uh, um, Ohio brass mushroom insulator as well. Um, now there's another insulator here which has really got me. Um, really got me stuck at the moment because I actually have no idea where it's come from. I don't know. Um, well, where it's made, I don't know what brand it is, but this came with my um, 1938 T-shaped pole. Um, got two of these. Um, originally, it had six of them, so I've got to now find another four of them. Um, don't know what brand it is. I know they come from you know the 30s, the 40s sort of vintage. Um, however, I have seen them reused on um, 60s poles. Now, there's absolutely no marking on the top at all. The only marking is is a T which you can just make out where that spider is, just behind the spider on my finger there. Um, it's just a capital T. Now the T looks like, just looks like that. Um, there it is right there, just in front of my finger. So um, if anyone recognises this insulator, it would be, um, yeah, it'd be nice to know the brand or anything. Um, a lot of people have said it could be a lap. But um, then they've said the colour is quite different and um, also the marking on the bottom is quite 
unusual as well. So that's our pin type insulators, and this is just the standard 1950s low voltage pin type insulator. It's not a telephone insulator, it looks very similar to one, but yeah, it, they're quite a different shape. It's got a bigger um, tie wire groove in that as well. Um, now we're going to look at the two main earlier guy wire or stay wire insulators. You got the Bullers version, and you got the early um, 1950s um, NZI version. Um, now these are used on the stay wires um, as a, a, a um, protection against if there's a fault up top because the stay wire generally goes from the top of the pole and then down to the ground to hold the pole up on the corner. So they put the, one of these half up the stay wire so if there's a fault at the top of the pole and someone touches the bottom of that wire it won't tingle them up. So um, yeah, that's not really much I can say. I've got two of these ones but one's actually on the old... Um, T-shaped pole that I've refurbished. So now I've just got to find another four of these because I've got two of these up there, and then I've just put a four bullers up there to to, to fill the fill the space. Put that out of the other way. Now we're going to look at the link strain insulators. Um, we've got three brands that we use of these. Well, we use we, that we've we've got here. Um, we've got. The new NZI New Zealand insulators version, this is more common than anything. Um, in fact, I shall say these are more common in New Zealand than disc insulators because once you go down um, Whangarei South, there's a lot of these in use. Um, these are actually from mainly the 60s, 70s, 80s vintage. Um, it's, just, it's not really a collectible insulator in my terms because I really go for the real old ones. But, you know, a lot of people like these ones. So, um, We'll go to ones I prefer, which is actually the original. Um, NZI actually marked this as a um, kidney insulator. Um, but because these are marketed as a kin kidney insulator, they also call these a kidney insulator, but I'm not too sure what the proper term for these ones are. Because um, obviously I don't think um, Bullers would have called it a kidney insulator. I shall say they've got a number for it. Um, in fact, we'll go to the American one, which is called the Hogs Liver Insulator. Um, uh, this is also made um, by Ohio Brass. Uh, these are really rare to find up here. We mostly got the um, the Bullers ones up in our area. Um, so originally these um, Lynx drain insulators um, were used up um, in place of disc insulators in the um, 30s and the 40s. Um, now this is when we went to the disc insulators, meaning the... Um, Ohio brass and the, the Bullers disc insulators. Before that, we used to use these up on the lines up in these areas. Um, but, however, when these were pulled down in the um, 60s and 70s, the um, power company actually held on to them and they started to use them as guy strain insulators, so they were stuck on the stay wires as well, which means, um, which is thank goodness because there's actually still quite a few of these guys in use. Um, there's two different sizes of the Bullers ones. Um, there's the smaller one, this is about maybe 6 inches across and then this one will be about 9 inches across so you can see there's a there's quite a difference in size yeah. um, so that's, a, um, that's the guy strain insulators, uh, link strain insulators sorry um, there's a couple of fuses I'll show you, there's one you saw on my radio wave street light setup um, this is actually an LV fuse which is um, made by NZI We've got the date on the top, so 1954 was when this was built. You can see it's been chipped a couple of times, but it's all good. Um, you pull, just rotate it, pull the fuse out, and you can see this is where the fuse is wired, so the wire will follow that groove across. Then down the other side and back to that conductor, it's generally a 60 amp fuse. Um, now when these were done away with, um, hang on, these haven't been done away with, they actually still make these. But when, um, you know, when they stopped using them up here, they went to the Moreland fuses mainly, so this is a Moreland fuse, so these are uh, mainly 60s and 70s vintage. Um, undo, the, undo the bottom nut here, um, they have a thing about crackling as you actually undo these two, so let's undo that and have a look, and it takes a, um, bear with me for a second, it takes a 60 amp um, HRC fuse. It's the fuse carrier there. If you want to replace the fuse, what you do is you um, just slide it outside. <coughs> yeah. 
when you put them in they go crackle goo, 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 and then lights flicker a bit in the house and then eventually when you done, done it up it gets a good connection and it's all stable yeah so now we're going to go on to a little bit of um, protection equipment so we'll put that aside put these guys aside um, you can see here I got two crystal valve lightning arrestors. Um Now this is one thing when you, um, if you start getting into collecting insulators and things like that, although I do collect the odd insulator and that, I'm actually more hold on to these guys for um, restoring poles because I restore the whole pole. Um, but rare stuff and that, these here have actually got placed on the wall where I put these, um, which I've actually just pulled them off for the video. Um, now when I got these, um, this one here is fractured down the bottom so I actually taped it up. I'm actually going to take that tape off and actually glue it properly. Um, this one was pulled off a swear line. Um, it actually came from up Weimar Valley Road actually I think from memory. <laughs> when they changed that to a um, three phase line. Um, and this one here I just recently got just in the last couple of days but when I got it it was broken at the bottom. And um, also the top was missing, and the reason why the top was missing was, I shall say, either it was, could have been broken by accident, but then um, often what happens is when they get hold of them, they take the um, glass case off and then they grab hold of the spark gaps. You can see these are spark gaps in here um, to sell a scrap metal, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame to pull these apart or break them open and get the scrap metal out of them. It's actually, you'd make a lot more money off them if you sold it on eBay or Trade Me, actually. Because us collectors really like things like this and we'll probably pay quite a bit for one of these too. Um, so this is made by Crystal Valve. Um, and funnily enough, I thought Crystal Valve shut down in the 30s. But this one's got a date on it. I'll take that off. Um, oh. So if you can just make it out there, it's 1947. So Crystal Valve seems to have still been going in 1947, so that's interesting. I thought they'd shut down in the 30s, or well, I was led to believe that. Um, so this one is actually extremely rare in this size, that's why um, I repaired it, to, went to such great um, length of time to repair it. It actually took me quite a while to get it going, because not only... Luckily I had one of these ones, which was, this part had been smashed, so it was only the top piece that was still good. So I salvaged the top piece and I've put it on this because you know obviously that was missing um, and then redone the pitch tar so I had to melt pitch tar and refill this gap so that's all been redone. Oh listen to that, that's hail. Um, so you know these are rare as if, even if they're broken I'll still get them and, and fix them up so yeah. Um, that's one awesome thing with these things is Opposite Hamblin Street in Rawani, there used to be three of them on a um, on a lot a power line pole a pole just outside, yeah, just by Hamblin Street there. And there was a guy that lived there who um, was talking about how he often saw that pole flash very brightly. And what I I clicked on what it was now that I've seen how these things work was it would have been when the um, lightning struck the line there, the lightning would have jumped across this gap, and this would whole this whole thing would have lit up probably pretty bright. And you wouldn't need the lightning strike to be close, it could be miles away somewhere else. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an amazing story with those things, so... I don't know if you would have heard anything, though. It would have been interesting to see, it would be cool to see one of them flash. Yeah, so that's, um... Yeah, that's uh, the, a lot of the old insulators that I, um... I've collected over the time. Um, I've got a lot more of them. But, um, you know, just showing you different types that we have. We've got quite a selection up here. Um, things like this now, it's, you know, each time, you know, I've only got the two of these and I just picked this one up and it's like, I thought they, they, I've had this one here for about maybe six years now. Um, and I thought when I got that they were all gone because I never saw one online since. Um, and this one here, um, well, I've just got the other day, so every time I see a new one of these turn up, it's, be, it's really amazing to know that they're still out there. It's quite nice to know that they're still out there somewhere. Yeah, I wish to see one when it's um, when it works, so to you know, to arrest the lightning strike. So it'd be interesting to see actually what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, guys, well, um, you know, that's us with a lot of our gear now. So um, a lot of the gear that I've got that I'm restoring or restored. So. 
I'll hang this up on the wall. Yeah, I've got a place up on the wall where I put put all this sort of stuff because I don't put these on poles just as a you know just in case there's a risk they might get broken or something. It's <coughs> if those got broken, the likelihood of me replacing them, you know, as each day goes past, is getting less and less and less. So they go up on the wall. Same with that liquid fuse, you know. I would, I won't put that up on a pole, but the old T-shaped pole they used to have them. I've got a couple of um, more modern glass fuses that go up there. So. There's another um, lightning restore which I'm actually looking for. I haven't actually got one, but I've drawn a picture. It's old spark gap barista. Now these insulators here, I've actually, although it looks like a baby's drawn it, are actually Buller's insulators. Now these were often used on the square lines, and there's two different versions. That there is a standard hardwood cross arm. That there would go onto a cross arm on the square line pole on one end. And then the line that goes past would be connected to here. And then this here will have a cable going down to earth. So what happens in a spark, in a, um, when the lightning strikes a line, it'll jump across the spark gaps here and then go down to earth, but the 11,000 volts can't jump across. Um, there's another version of that, which is here, which instead of having a steel strap, it's got three insulators. So that end's connected to earth. <coughs> And that then's connected to the line. Um, and same thing, it just bolts on the cross arm on the end of the um, actual pole cross arm. So then the line you know, goes past on the other side of the other end of that cross arm. So let's say that there is that cross arm, you've got the power pole there. Well, the end of this cross arm you'd be looking at like this. So then it goes across that way. And those insulators stand there. So then that line, the power line that goes past here, goes across to, to there. So yeah, um, that's what I'm keeping my up, eye out for at the moment. They're quite rare now. Um, yeah. So here we go, guys. Well, that's, yeah. Um, quite fun finding some of these. Some of these devices that, you know, they particularly these, these are really amazing looking devices, you know. And, to you know, they're so rare now. It's... I, I still wonder, is there any more out on the line still now, today? Um, and, or, is it like that? I've never never seen one of these on the line since that one was pulled out. Now, I got that um, liquid fuse when I was eight years old. But then, um, oh no, I don't know, how old would I have been? It was quite a few years ago, I remember being really young getting it. Um, but then, I found out more about them now that the liquid in them was actually hazardous but as I showed when you saw this in my last video you'd um you might remember I took that look oh, I got it I sent it away got that liquid cleaned out and I filled it up with diesel because diesel actually looks very similar yeah so I think that you know that's also very rare not many of these about I don't know if there's any more out or am I the only one that's got one now so yeah Oh guys, we'll see you guys next time. Um, I might do a, um, a video on some of our old Mercury street lights that we used to have, which have now also gone. <laughs> now we'll see you next time. See you guys.